Oh, I'm so happy it arrived, especially appreciating this old man, Muse. Calling old man here is not a problem, he has a wisdom. This is our best driver. Whenever we have a problem or driving in the sand, we always need Muse and we rely on him so much. And that guy, that's our engineer, Sadie, and he would be the guy you would see him sitting here all day long in this heat operating the machine. That's the engineer, Sadie. The irony is that you must have water before you can drill for water. Water lubricates the drill and flushes out the earth. Drilling must be planned around the availability of water. Water is gathered in this nearby marsh and brought to the borehole site. The marsh will soon dry up, but these pits must be full before drilling can begin. Water is recycled throughout the drilling process. Polymer is added to keep the well from collapsing. This is the mud pump. And they will put in the pit, in that water, and will suck the water, and the water will uh, come out here. There's a hole here underneath it. And this one is spinning, cutting the soil, going down, it's spinning, going down. The water will flush the cut out. Left tie. Get down. Yes. The drilling takes many hours. The drilling's going well. Water flushes out the earth as the drill digs deeper. In the U.S., an average well rarely goes deeper than 65 feet. But here in South Sudan, wells often go as deep as 300 feet. Mud is constantly removed so the water can keep flowing properly. These little pieces of sand, this is how we know whether we hit the water or not. This one was a little tiny water. This one was water, but not a lot, just moisture. And then the water is stuck here. And you can see when you hit the aquifer, you can see exactly. Is that sand, is the water sand or is it dry land sand? The sand from the aquifer has less mud in it and does not clump when squeezed. This is a good sign what they hope to see in many more samples as they bore deeper. But then, another muddy sample. They have reached only a small aquifer, a narrow band of water that is not a reliable source. They now have to bore through another layer of dry sand to reach an aquifer that will not run dry. The drilling continues in fits and starts. Problems are frequently met, but always overcome. Salva and his crew have unwavering resolve and perseverance, characteristics that seem common in Avignon. At 260 feet, the crew reaches a substantial aquifer. The drilling bars are removed. The blue PVC pipe, or casing, is inserted the full depth of the well as an outer layer of protection. Metal pipe will be placed inside it to carry water to the pump. You see the rocks? All those stones? Those stones will be laying down here. All this that will be covered with the rocks. When the water is coming with the sand, it filters through the rocks. Inside here is pure water. This pure water will get to that, to that pipe. And the pipe is all connected with the cylinder. And that is pure clean water. Some casing sections have slits to provide additional filtering. These sections are installed at the well's deepest level, within the aquifer itself. Highly compressed air blows out the dirty water until only clear, sparkling water emerges from the aquifer hundreds of feet below. It's still dirty. It's going to be really, really clean. Tomorrow, the pipe and pump will be installed and the villagers will enjoy their first taste of fresh water. And then they will celebrate.